a fundamental dimension for understanding the culture of any society in the world today, and for that matter, throughout all of human history, is the concept of value. Simply put, a value is nothing more than the importance the people in a society put on something or on an idea. Take individualism, for example. When compared to other high-tech societies, Germany, Japan, Great Britain, we here in America value greatly individualism. That is, the freedom to make our own choices and to be completely different from everybody else around us. Yet in the midst of a society whose culture is so powerful that you can find parts of it in literally every nook and cranny of the world today. I mean, after all, who doesn't know that King James is not royalty? He's a basketball player north of here. <laughs> in the midst of our kind of society, we have a subculture that has different values values that emphasize commitment and conformity and are in fact opposed to too much individualism. Of course, they have different values. They are the Amish. Now, if all you know about the Amish is the mind-numbing malarkey of Amish cable reality shows, you know nothing, nada. Believe me, you know nothing. If you know anything at all, it's likely the outer appearances of the Amish. You know, the horse-drawn plow in the field, the buggies, the plain clothes, the Pennsylvania Dutch language. But the real reality of the Am Amish is an inward set of characteristics, an emphasis on commitment and conformity. This is the glue, or for you Lego fans out there, the Kregel, that holds this culture together. And it is a culture that is now so successful that over 90% of daughters and sons born to Amish families, upon reaching the age of decision, which is about the age of 20, will decide to be baptized Amish, and will remain faithful to that distinctive lifestyle for the rest of their lives. Now, this commitment is not to an abstract reality called the Amish, but to a very concrete entity. It's to their church group, and each church group consists only of about two dozen families. You know what that means? They don't have church buildings. So in order to get from house to house, because they rotate the church service, the Sunday service from residence to residence, you have to live close together. So you can get there from one end of the church group to the other with a horse and buggy or by walking. This creates face-to-face -face interaction. This cements the commitment and the solidarity of their group. Altogether, there are over 2,200 of these small Amish church groups located in about 500 communities scattered in 31 states and two Canadian provinces. Now, all subcultures are surrounded by a main culture. The Amish are surrounded by us individualistic Americans. And all subcultures have to solve the problem of maintaining an inner solidarity in order to sustain themselves and to pass their values on from one generation to the next. For the Amish, this involves two key elements. The first element is that each Amish church group is in fact autonomous. Each Amish church group has a bishop, two ministers and a deacon, 24 families. And the elders are men nominated by other church members and then 
believe, can you believe this? They're selected by lottery. But that's in accordance with a New Testament book called Acts of the Apostles. And the second key element of the Amish, and you can see a really nice but large Amish family walking to church, is that when a young lady and a young man, or a young man, does, reaches the age of decision to get baptized, they're making a holy vow, a holy covenant to that particular church group and to their church discipline. You see, there is no hierarchy of cardinals or council of elders issuing doctrinal directives from a distant place. There's limited bureaucracy. Every church group is autonomous and can literally make up its own rules so long as they don't own automobiles. Now, you can attend an Amish church service. I've attended several. This one happens to be in a barn, so you have the ambiance of horses and cows as you go through the church service, which is about three and a half hours long. And in Pennsylvania Dutch, a language I sure don't understand, boy, oh boy, sometimes I wish I could take a gigantic skinny vanilla latte with me, <laughs> but that would be a little bit out of place. But what is out of place, from my point of view, is a full-fledged member of a society that values individualism is the quiet cooperation that occurs during the church service. You see, everyone in that small group will sing the hymns in unison. What makes this unique and distinctive is that their hymn books have no notes only words. Yet, there is a collective memory for the musical intonation placed on every syllable of every word of every hymn. And after the church service is over, the older boys and girls, the teenagers, will pack up all of the benches, because after all, you have to deliver benches to everyone else's house in order to have a place for everyone to sit during a church service. They'll pack them up, without any instructions, they know what to do. And boys and girls as young as three years old pick up the Bibles and the hymnals and put them in a wood chest. A business manager who understands that teamwork is essential to making a profit would be envious of the way they coordinate quietly everything they do. That's logistics. And boy, oh boy, it works. It works so well that when we begin to look at cooperation in our lives, does it have any application? Can we use the Amish to help reconstruct our reality? Yes, we can. For instance, there isn't a coach that doesn't understand that teamwork and team spirit is essential to winning. That a team with superior talent can often lose to a team with lesser talent if that superior team lacks spirit and teamwork. Business executives also know that in addition to making a profit, it's also important that employees have a nice place to work, a good workplace. And the military drums in its, into its recruits the need, the commitment to be a band of brothers, a band of sisters in order to survive and to be effective during combat. Ironically, we push back against the very individualism that is the hallmark of our society through an endless stream of seminars and workshops on teamwork and team spirit. Indeed, we spend billions and billions of dollars on something that is woven into the very fabric of Amish society. So yes, there are applications of the Amish lifestyle to the way we live, to the way we work, to the way we live in our communities. And 
I can tell you how well it works because I teach a course on the Amish. And several years ago, I had my class, about 20 students, visit an Amish community in western Ohio near the small village of Bell Center. Some of you may know where that is. And we stopped by and were watching how this one business makes wood pallets. Most of the workers were young men, 16, 17, 18, not yet married. And so one of the students in my class asked, how do you meet girls? And so the boys explained, because they were rather fascinated with my 20 students, 15 of whom were girls. <laughs> <laughs> they were really fascinated, and they said, well, we have a Sunday sing. On Sunday afternoon after the church service, the singles get together, and the girls will kind of be on one side of the room and the boys on the other, and one group will start singing, and then they'll challenge the other group to sing. You know, it's not unlike the very first performance you saw here, the Kai Wanin performance, uh, except for the body paint and the uh, sticks and the outfits and the dancing. Otherwise, it's identical, okay? <laughs> and so the student asked, as a follow-up question, well, what do you sing? And they said, we'll show you and they put their heads together, popped back up in about two seconds, and they sang basically what is a campfire song, a, a scout song. And some of you will recognize it. You know what it was? Bingo. There was a farmer who had a dog, and Bingo was his name O. <laughs> Pretty neat. But you know what happened next? One big collective smile on these boys' faces, and they looked at my class, and they said, your turn. <laughs> and I was a little bit apprehensive, is the, how my class would react. After all, we're a bunch of individualistic Americans. And they huddled together, and within about two seconds, they popped up, and they sang a song. They sang a song which represents lifetime commitment, lifetime commitment that everyone in this audience, almost everyone, would recognize. It was the OSU theme song, Carmen, Ohio. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? I was proud of them. <laughs> and so, in conclusion, my friends, we non-Amish need teamwork. For without it, who is going to reply when I say, O-H! 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 Thank you.